Are you looking for Malachi? It's in the Bible. It's the last book of the Old Testament section of the Bible. Before Matthew, you have Malachi. And I want us to take a look at verse 16, chapter 3. Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. Do you know what he's saying? He says, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. He says they were sharing the word of God. Now the prophet is talking. He's looking at the future. And he tells something in the realm of the spirit. He says, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Like the Bible tells us to share the word of God with one another. Then he says, the Lord listened in and heard what they were saying. He heard them. Now, look at it. He says here, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. Those who feared God. And thought upon his name. And spake often one to another. Sharing the word of God. He says, look at it here. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. They meditated upon his name. His name was important to them. Now, if they meditated sufficiently, it would be in their confession. His name would be in their talk. Now the Bible says God listened and heard their discussions. He said they spoke often. So he heard them and wrote a book of remembrance concerning them. Now what is a book of remembrance? It's a book that's periodically opened in the presence of God where the names of those who have been confessing rightly are written. And from time to time, that book is opened and all their confessions are released unto them. Why? Because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. What confession? Not confession of sin. He says of our confession. Confession comes from the Greek word homologia. That is the noun. What it means is to speak the same word in agreement. It means speaking the same thing in consent. You say what God has said about you, about your situation, in agreement with God. For example, when you read in uh, uh, Hebrews 13th chapter, when you read from the 14th to the 5th verses, he says something very beautiful there. Let me give it to you. And I think that it's better for you to connect. Chapter 13 from verse... For it says, Marriage is honorable in all, in the bed on the fire, but all among us and the daughters God will judge. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. He says, He hath said, the Lord is my helper, so that we may boldly say. You see, whatever God has said about us is so that we can make a bold confession. Now, you would see how big this thing is in a moment. We ought to make a bold confession. He had said, by whose stripes you were healed, so that I may boldly say, the Lord is my healer, I shall not accommodate sickness in my body. And so I make a bold confession. The health of God is in me. The life of God is in me. I will not be sick. That's a bold confession. The Bible says so that we may boldly say. What is a bold confession? A bold confession is not when you open your eyes and shout it louder. A bold confession is something big and powerful that you say because of what God has said. He says, I shall not fear what man shall do unto me. Because he says, the Lord is my helper. That's a bold confession. Hallelujah. All right, now, here is the big thing. 
As kings and priests unto God, as we are called to be, we are supposed to offer sacrifices every day to God. You agree with that? In the Old Testament, they offered sacrifices every day. They brought the sacrifices to the, the base of the brazen altar every day. Now, we also in the, in, in the new contract, in the new deal that has brought us life and light, we also have something to offer. Because Jesus Christ is the high priest. There must be something for our high priest to offer. Hello? Okay. Go to, you are in Hebrews, right? Go to the same chapter. I want to read to you from verse 15. In fact, you all read it together. Verse 15, want to go. By who? By Jesus. Okay, go on. Okay. Now, this is, this is powerful, I'm telling you. It's just so powerful. You see, he says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifices of praise to God continually. Continually. What are sacrifices of praise? He says, that is, he explains. Read it. That is what? The fruit of our lips. What, what, what do you mean by fruit of your lips? Words. He says, giving thanks to his name. Now, interestingly, what is rendered here giving thanks in the Greek language doesn't really mean giving thanks. The word translated here giving thanks, interestingly I said, is the same word that you find in Romans chapter 10 verse 10, where it says, with the mouth confession is made. It is the verb of homologia. That verb is homologio. It means making confession. So what does that mean then? He is saying, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips making confession to his name. Now, do you know why you are quiet? Can I tell you why you are quiet? You didn't see it. Maybe you are in class one. <laughs> because over in the higher classes, those are, those are the things we celebrate. See, see the way you are just quiet like this. You, you, you are like, you didn't, you didn't understand. Let me try and break it down. That's a high realm. <laughs> Look at them. It's unbelievable. You were just, just there looking. You just... Now, I, from reading those things, you know, I celebrate. You read the same thing and you just look. <laughs> he says, by him therefore let us offer to God the sacrifices. We offer him sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices. He tells us what those spiritual sacrifices are. He says, the fruit of our lips, making confession to his name. What do you mean by making confession to his name? Making confession to his name, that's why I read to you Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. So that you can understand this. <laughs> Look, how do you make confession to his name? You see, when I say, oh dear Lord Jesus, grant them to understand. This is wonderful. You see, when I say, when I say, I got the life of God in me. Why? I say that in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. He's given me life and I'm so strong and successful. When I say that, the Bible says it is a spiritual sacrifice. Listen, you know what God is saying? He's inviting us to say such things. He says he needs them. Oh. In the Old Testament, they were killing bulls and bulls and bulls every day, all year round. He asked them. He said, if I were hungry, will I ask you? He said, of what use is all of this killing unto me? He said, the cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. 
He's telling them, when I ask you to give sacrifices, I'm not telling them I'm interested in blood of animals. The first time he asked for sacrifices, for the children of Israel to bring out things, what was it supposed to be used for? He said, for the building of the temple. What is the temple for? Now look, read your Bible. He says, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus said, I will build my church, which is his body, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How is he building his church? Through the fruit of our lips, giving confession to his name. As we declare his word, we are built. Come on, go ahead, I got. Oh. He didn't say the ministers shall build the church. He said, I will build my church. But he needs the material. That's how we're built. Your life cannot be built better than the words that come from you. There must be a consistency. I know who I am. I'm a success. Oh, go ahead and go. Hallelujah. Just a moment. Just a moment. See, why are you celebrating that? You ought, you ought to celebrate that. You, how do you celebrate that? Oh, boy. You were told something was wrong with your heart or something was wrong with your kidneys or your lungs. All these things are inside, right? This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. When you say that, when you say that, Jesus receives it as a sacrifice. Don't offer to him bad sacrifices. He said the fruit of our lips, making confession, homologio, making confession to his name. Making confession to his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, it shall not come nigh thee. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies and my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going out in the night time. So do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I fear no evil. I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hey! <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 He says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Hallelujah. Out of them all. That's why we have to speak in tongues continually. Because as you speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit will be directing your paths. You speak in tongues. There's trouble over here. No, you go like this. There's trouble over here. You speak in tongues. You judge that one. There's trouble over there. You speak in tongues. And it's over there. And you keep negotiating your way. Can you shout amen, somebody? <laughs> Good things are happening right now. I'm receiving good things into my life right now. Right now. Right now. Woo! I'm receiving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 